everybody. My name is Heather and I am the owner and operator of Monet Away Paint Studios. I am coming to you this morning with my first introductory video and we are going to go through some basic painting equipment and then hopefully within time get a, paint, a basic painting done as well just so you can view how it all works. It's supposed to be for watercolor. And if you go for the Michael sets, this is the bigger one, but there's a smaller one. It's a similar idea. You're going to take all the uh, softer rayon hair brushes out of it to use. And really, the, the Lick smaller set is about five bucks. The Michael set is always advertised for about $9.99, but you can usually get it a little cheaper than that. So seven or six, seven bucks, depending on the uh, specials they got going at that point. Then also paints. I use a lot of the larger Blick acrylic paints, but we understand if you're an individual, you may not want to complete huge bottles, although you can get them in smaller bottles. These are slightly more liquidy, and probably something if you've painted with me that you've used, got used to using in my class. If you use the uh, tube paints, which may be more suitable for you as an individual, they are a thicker paint, but you can get a lot more texture out of them. They're a little less uh, transparent. So we've got those ranges of paints that we use. In my classes, I often end up combining the paints, you know, because I needed that green and I may need that blue, but it seems to all work out in the end. Also, as far as other painting equipment goes, you'll need paper towel. Don't skimp on that because the cheaper it is, the more you'll go through. Some uh, solo cup or any plastic cup or any leftover jar will do. And I love these foam trays. You can get them from Smith's um, primarily. Or um, what is it? Final? Smart and final. Smart and final. But um, really, those they're just a little uh, firmer than the than the plates are, and they use a little less space if space is your issue. But of course, a foam plate will do as well. I do not advise paper, as the paints tend to soak into them after a while, as they are more to base. Whereas the foam, for the most part, it sits on top. So for our painting today, with Easter coming along, we're going to paint a little bunny out in a field with a little ba Easter basket in the background and some flowers. It's just a cute little Easter bee. I am going to put out some white titanium black white, or you can use a tube titanium white as a water. A little light green. I'll take the whole cap off, it's just easier. That needs a smaller dollop. Because it's a field, there's some grass, you need a couple of greens. I thought you can't paint any green out of one green, but I took light green and I took plate over the uh, flick acrylic plate over green. And some flower colours. Um, let's do a little purple. That's always a cool flower colour. See if we can get it out. Purple. Yellow, complementary or purple, they always make each other stand out. Please, this one is sealed. Open it. Open it. Open it. So purple and yellow, always good complementary to have together. Blue and orange are complementary as well, and red and green. But we, I think, are going to have some nice deep quinacridine magenta. And because we have a white bunny, white kind of bunny, it's going to be light in the grass, we're going to put some blue shading in him. White and blue go well, and as well as purple. So that on, and I think we're ready to roll. Before I begin any painting, Take my cup, my paint water, and if we don't need to draw an, a line or some or some sort of outline, we can just wet down the entire background. This just helps it go on a little smoother, breaks down any residue on the canvas. A lot of you who have done my classes have done this with me before, kind of know the drill on that. There's nothing wrong if you've never done it, it's just like a painting's going to turn out well, it's just a little trick of the trade. Now in this particular painting, we do a complete green background before we go on to the other um, parts of it. 
So on mine, I do a lot of what we call double loading. This just helps the beginner um, get a nice textural, nice textural contrast and color contrast in their background in the beginning when they're first learning to paint. So I'll do some green, a little white, maybe a little dark green. And I'm putting it on thinking of a grassy field. All that texture going on in the background there. Thought I might sit on the stool, it turns out I probably won't. So you can see by double loading, by picking up those three colors separately, They'll come onto the canvas and sort of half blend, half not blend. By doing these short little brush strokes, I'm creating a bit of texture in that background. And then double loading through the color combo. And we just keep going. I want a light colour bunny with having the colour behind it's going to add um, depth to the white. That's why I normally prefer having the colour and the white behind it. Some of you know you might be wondering about my accent. I am originally from South Africa, so there is that little bit of a different accent going on. And now we need to dry this background, so we'll just break for the dry pipe. So we have now got our background dry. Um, I do want to put in a little basket, so I've actually added some light brown, which is sienna, and dark brown, which is umber, to my tray as well, just to have a nice few other colors to work with. I'm going to still take my large brush, and we're going to just, oh, before I take my large brush, we're going to just draw it on here with chalk. I love drawing over paint with chalk because if you'd make a mistake, you can always just take wet paper towel and wipe it away. Draw our little basket going on here. Maybe it's somewhere there, and this will be the inside of the basket. And then we're going to have a nice little bunny going on over here, I think. His ears, because bunnies, you know, they always need nice big ears, and his body just kind of all curled up on the grass there. And of course, he needs a bunny eye. But, you know, we'll uh, get down to those things. Oh, a little bunny nose as well, never hurt. Right, let's grab our large brush, get some of that basket uh, painted in. I am going to take me some light sienna, a bit of white, a tiny drop of dark umber, or umber as I think it's just called in this case. We're going to paint our basket round. I'm going to paint over the front of the bunny's face for now. Paint over the bunny's face. 
Just get that basic shape in. The bottom area of the basket, I'm just going to leave it a bit darker. A bit umber and a little white and left over sienna on my brush. Going with the roundness of the balsam tonight. Although we will eventually put some grass back over a certain amount. In fact, I'm going to add a little black to my palette just to darken that up more. Get a black and dark brown going there. Then what we might do is try and show some of that weave of the basket by mixing it with dark black and dark brown together. And bring in some dark this morning. And when it draws up, we tighten up those lines to create that idea of a weave and let that, that dry up a little bit. So I've taken my small flat brush, got my basket a little drier. And with the idea of weave going on. And then a little leaf that direction. smaller flat brush, a little light brown, a little white, you can sort of mix there. It's going to get the pattern of blue. might seem like a bit of work, but it's the only way we can create that feel of weaving without actually painting it for the weave. The leaves are bringing some of these weaves basket, now we can focus on the bunny. Put 
bunny. Those colours underneath will shine through a little, so it's a little bit more depth to the white. And we're starting to get this cute little muddy on the grass ready for Easter. One next thing we're going to do with the basket, which you can pre-draw with chalk, is add in the handle, which will do something like this. Then that way at least it shows up a more of a basket up here going on. Notice I'm making it a little lighter, stand out. And then the hand kind of goes around. Give it a back from now. We also want to add a few little flowers at the bottom. Let's make you know, nice and festive Easterish. My suggestion is always is to just kind of pre-draw a few little flowers here. Sadly, you want to have them. At least that way you've got something to go by. And then... And get a small little flat brush out. We're going to make the centers of these flowers white, although we could add a bit of yellow, it's okay. Just for the purposes of matching in with the bunny. And I can decide by which size medium brush I use. A smaller or a larger one is the average size of the petal of the flower. I'm going to use a larger one just to kind of cover. Gentler and a little whiter. Whenever I'm painting on top of another strong colour, I always like to add a little white to my acrylic paint. Makes it less transparent. And that a nice and gentle one happening there. Notice I'm just using the brush to make the petals. From South Africa, we have petals. Petals. Our brush does the work for us on that. If you do a little magenta and you do a little white, you can get two tones coming up right away if you need to. That way the love the work stuff for you. Yeah, it's fine another colour to me. Now I'm mixing everything on one tray, but if you're working at home, you can always take a second tray. Yellow and a little line. Uh, let's make this one 
hard to contrast with the dark back of the uh, basket. This also kind of hides the bottom of the basket as well. Yellow may need two layers, just the thinner paint. At least we can get the idea going. Nice purple one next. White, purple. Maybe highlights, a few highlights on there. That's a nice thing, you can always go back and work on it. Maybe put another pink flower below here. All flowers won't have to be exactly the same size. We use different sizes in nature. We can up in different sizes as well. As long as one's not just one is huge, they wouldn't be certain proportion of each other. I'm feeling like I need another flower over there or something. something. Oh, maybe we'll put grass there. We'll hit with the grass now. We've got a few flowers there, and now we want to start putting some front grass to set in the bunny and the basket. Put some left over of the basket. So back to my light green, dark green, a touch of white here and there. I'm going to grab my bigger brush again. So I can have a consistent uh, size grass color. But you can use a medium brush, I think. Wrong. There we go, it's pretty easy to set in that bunny. Turn my brush vertical sometimes, kind of get longer with the stalk or something. Set in that basket a bit. And put the shadow of the grass looking in there. Use a bit lighter where I go behind the flowers. And you could even use a smaller brush for that. Make them all join together. And let's give the bunny an eye. Needs a nose as well. What we're doing with the black is getting the shadow of the nose in. It's like a little line. Okay, and um, the pink nose for the bunny, a lot of white involved here. And sometimes white bunnies. Rick have a little pink on the inside of their eyes and the inside of their ears. I don't mind that they're little black and pink mix because this is shadow area inside the ear.
and then I'm just going to finish up the arms. And when it's dry, we'll put a little pile out on that to bring it back In the meantime, we're going to thicken up the bunny's coat just a little, and we will have a bunny in the grass with a glass Easter basket. Ready for Easter. areas just so there's less green popping through there. We do want some depth but we don't want it to be too crazy. You could even do this before you touched up the grass, but I can to make it for now. Just a touch of shadow, not crazy, but a little blue, a little white, basically. You could use grey as well, though. Another one. You might add a little touch of black just to dull the blue a little. Wipe my brush, I don't too much paint. And then, sort of in between the ears here, just darken that up. Around the bottom of the face, just giving that face shape to our little bunny. in the chest gets into the shadow. Now I've got a layer of wet white paint that I'm putting this onto so it becomes a little easier to blend up behind the ears here. And the paint's still wet. You can get a few little bits of blue colour going on in the actual fur. Just to give our bunny a bit of depth. Best done, wet on wet. We should be together. And that way they blend in a little bit easier. A lot of white, little blue, tiny drops left. Right? And we're just darken up under the bunny's face a little more. Black, a little blue, blue and black. Very darker, grayish shadow. Smaller brush. Maybe a little around the bunny's arm. Basket handle, so dark brown and black, it comes out beyond the eyes. There we go. I'm thinking, I wonder if we should have one or two more flowers just so we don't have so much negative space in the middle of the basket. There. Maybe a flower, slightly more an angle there, and maybe. 
in here. Sometimes as you're painting, you'll only see things as you go along, and you have to kind of adjust to it. Put one more purple one in. I've just got my small round brush, then a bunch of little grass stems just to break that big dark area there. And I might just have some coming, if there's some coming up there. Darker around by base of those flowers, or darker greens, light green mixed. Right, so at this point, I am calling this painting done. I'm now, as it said, abandoning it and saying it is done, and I will sign it, initial it. We have our bunny in the bar, Easter bunny in basket. Maybe we'll think of it as a class if, it's, if I feel it's doable. Thank you, everybody. And also, I want to give thanks to BizBot Studios, Mark Weinberger Studio, for filming this. Thank you.